how's it possible I've run this channel for over two years and haven't done a video on this city yet? Well, I gotta correct that problem. So, if you wanna know what it's like to live in Berkeley, California, that's what I'm gonna talk about today. So let's get to it. Welcome to the Thriving in the Bay Area channel. I'm your local realtor, Rich Fleming. And in today's video, we are going to talk about the city of Berkeley. Um, this video might be a little bit longer than my typical video because, well, Berkeley has so many dynamics to it. I wanna to touch upon them, uh, a little bit of the history, uh, some of the challenges, its interaction with the University of California. It's just a lot to Berkeley. I must also admit I'm a little bit biased because I did go to Cal for college. So let's just jump into it. But before we start, if you got any questions about anything I cover in this video or any of my other videos, drop me a text, give me a call, send me an email, because when it comes to helping you transition to the Bay Area, that's what I do. So let's just jump straight into it. Oh, contact information in the video description below. So let's just jump into it. Um, let's start with, as I always do, where you can find Berkeley on a map. Uh, Berkeley is right next to Oakland. It's just north of Oakland. It is about five miles from downtown Berkeley to downtown Oakland. The city has a little bit over 120,000 people and that is spread out over just under 10 and a half square miles. So that gives it a population density of about 12,000 people per square mile, which by East Bay standards is pretty densely populated. But that is very interesting the way that works here in Berkeley. A large percentage of the people who do live here are students. So during the fall and spring, winter months, this area, Berkeley in general, is very thriving, very teeming, lots of energy, lots of stuff going on. And during the summer months, the summer break, this is being filmed about a week, two weeks before the fall semester starts here at Cal. So during the summertime, it is a kind of a sleepy little town. You can actually find parking and get into restaurants. So, uh, it definitely has a different feel depending on what time of the year you're here. So let's talk about the history of Berkeley. Uh, this town has a lot of history and the history of the city is very intertwined with the history of the University of California. The city really came into being, or this area came into being around 1866 with the formation of the College of California. Its founders named the area Berkeley, and I believe it should be actually pronounced Berkeley after an Anglo-Irish archbishop named George Berkeley. I believe that's how you pronounce it. But anyway, it came into existence, the college in 1866. It became officially affiliated with the state and was named the University of California in 1868. So this was the first campus of the University of California system. The city of Berkeley was not incorporated until 10 years later in 1878. Through much of its history, especially I'd say in the last 60 years or so, the interaction between the city of Berkeley and the University of California at Berkeley, the campus here, eh, it's been some pretty contentious at times, uh, but, it is an area where, you know, both the city and the university are really dependent on each other at this stage. So, you know, they've learned to play nice in the sandbox. Employment and commerce here in Berkeley. And as I mentioned earlier, 
the University of California and the city of Berkeley are very intertwined and it really becomes obvious when you look at employment and commerce in this city. So when you look at the largest employers in the city of Berkeley, well, by far, the largest employer, employer is the University of California. There are something like 13,600 employees on the campus. There are probably about 35, 40,000 students. Then there is the Lawrence Labs of Berkeley. And that is a Department of Energy facility, but it is managed by the University of California. And that facility has about 3,800 employees. After that, the next largest employers are Alta Bates Hospital, which has about 2,000 employees. The city of Berkeley, which has about 1,500 employees. And Bayer, the pharmaceutical company, has about 1,000 employees here in the city. But between the employees and the students, they make up a considerable part of the purchasing power of people who are here regularly in the city of Berkeley. The city has really about four commerce areas. So Berkeley is pretty anti big box store. So you won't find uh, you know, like the Best Buys, Walmarts of the world. There is, there are I, like one or two targets, smaller targets in the city, but it is not a big box type of city. Most of the commerce happens um, either on College Avenue in the Elmwood area, Telegraph Avenue, which essentially is the main thoroughfare that leads to the University of California, from Oakland, especially like within five or six blocks of the campus on Telegraph, there's a lot of commerce really designed and targeted towards students. The next area is the 4th Street shopping area, which is close to the bay. Uh, you have a lot of smaller retail stores there, some good restaurants over there. Then you have the Shattuck Avenue downtown area. And then on the north side of Berkeley, you have the Solano Avenue area. All of these areas are really dominated by smaller, for the most part, mom and pop shops. Fourth Street has um, some larger brands in that area, but it is really uh, more of a mom and pop type of, of city. If you're looking for unique products or what have you, you're way more likely to find them here than in most other cities, just because of how things are structured here. schools in Berkeley. So those are administered by the Berkeley Unified School District. Uh, I believe there are 11 elementary, three middle school, and one high school. Um, the high school is really pretty big. It's Berkeley High. Um, they have a lot of unique programs there, a lot of unique language and science programs. Uh, it is a big school though, by high school standards. It's got over 3,000 students. So if you go to the website niche.com, it ranks the Berkeley Unified School District, I think is the 55th best in the state. One thing it really is known for though, is those wide variety of services, types of classes, uh, you know, really meeting the needs of a, a varied student body and their families. Crime here in Berkeley. So Berkeley has a reputation for being a pretty high crime city. That may not be truly uh, deserved. As I often do in these videos, I point out that crime is often a neighborhood specific challenge. And that is definitely the case here in Berkeley. If you look at the website niche.com, it gives Berkeley a grade of C for crime. But if you dig into the details that they offer a little bit deeper, uh, you will see that the violent crime rate here in Berkeley is lower than the national average but the property crime rate here is much higher than national average. And that's really driven by the campus area of Berkeley. Unfortunately, you have a lot of students in the area. They get their backpacks stolen, computers stolen, uh, phones stolen, things like that. So 
that is really what drives uh, the property crime rate. You also do have a lot of car break-ins here in Berkeley. And once again, that also tends to be concentrated in the campus and downtown area, somewhat on the west side of Berkeley. The north side of Berkeley really has uh, pretty low crime rates. It's a very, very safe area. I think, you know, being here, you should definitely have a good sense of your physical safety in Berkeley. It really is a, a safe city overall, especially for its size, the number of people that come in and out. Um, but you definitely do have to worry about uh, leaving your possessions around uh, and potentially having them stolen or your car broken into. Housing here in Berkeley. So Berkeley definitely has a wide range of housing. It has a very high percentage of rental housing and that is just due to its nature uh, of being a, essentially a college town. Uh, a lot of students rent, uh, a lot of people coming in and out of town. So it also does have a pretty sizable stock of detached homes and condominiums are becoming more prevalent, especially in the downtown area. According to the site redfin.com, the median price for homes sold in Berkeley during the month of July 2023 is about $1.4 million. And the number of days on the market, the days until the home sold once it was put on the market is 14 days. This is an extremely high demand area, very popular. You've got some great views. It's very, geographically speaking, very convenient to be able to get to uh, other parts of the Bay Area, Oakland, uh, into Contra Costa County, into San Francisco. So it is a very popular area. It does have a unique history in California housing. And I would say that many of the actions Berkeley has taken historically related to housing have actually or were at the forefront of causing many of California's housing crisis problems. So in the 1960s, 1970s, Berkeley, the residents of Berkeley really became anti-development, anti-new housing. They felt that it was changing the city. They were just basically against developers. And by the 70s, that pretty much put a complete halt to all new housing development. And then in the late 70s, Berkeley instituted one of the most strict uh, rent control laws in the country. And that too also really changed the dynamics uh, related to housing here in Berkeley. So given the challenges of building new housing, essentially it was impossible to build housing. The Berkeley City Board was completely against new housing. The uh, rise of very stringent rent control just meant there was no new housing built in Berkeley for about two and a half, three decades. And it really came to punish Berkeley as far as the quality of its housing stock, which was atrocious. Um, for many years, the price of that housing stock, which was very high because of the demand, especially for rental housing. This was somewhat abated in the mid 90s when the Costa Hawkins Act was passed in California, which essentially said all new development was excluded from rent control and they made it a little bit easier to get development done. And that has really started to change Berkeley, especially in the downtown area. You have seen a lot more development of apartments and condos in that area. But the city overall is still very challenged for housing. When you're considering housing in Berkeley, Berkeley is really organized into three primary areas for housing. Um, one is the south side. Of Berkeley and that is the side of Berkeley that is closest to Oakland. It is also the side that the University of California campus is located on. There is a lot of rental housing on that side of campus. Um, it's really the whole area is targeted towards students. Uh, you do have 
uh, detached homes, condominiums on the south side, but you are really driven by the housing needs of students on that side of Berkeley. Then there is the west side, that's the side closest to the San Francisco Bay. Uh, there is a lot of detached smaller homes. You'll get two bedrooms, even some one bedroom, one bathroom places, two bedroom, one bathroom places, a lot of character in the homes. Berkeley overall, the homes have a lot of character. You don't get a lot of new housing stock. You get very unique homes. Many of them have been significantly upgraded over the years and have very modern interiors, but it can just depend on where exactly you're looking or the individual house. Uh, but the west side, smaller homes, um, and you have very good access to the freeway on that side, so that it makes that side of the city very popular. And then there is the north side, and this is generally, I would consider it to be the most affluent side of Berkeley. You have the largest homes, you have some spectacular views uh, of the city. Uh, it tends to be the most expensive um, area as far as housing prices are concerned. The drawback to being on the north side is it is probably the most difficult area of the city to get to the freeway from. Uh, depending on where you are, it can be a good 15 minutes, maybe even more during rush hour to get to a freeway from the north side. So that's kind of the drawback there. But it is a spectacular area to live in. Eh, I think Berkeley overall is a pretty great place to live in. So. Transportation here in Berkeley. So Berkeley probably has the most transportation options of any city in the East Bay other than Oakland. Uh, you have, I believe, three BART stations in the city. Uh, their bus service is provided by AC Transit, and there's something like 13 regular running bus lines in the city. There are three or four bus lines they run during the school year specifically targeting the student population in the city and there's I think like five different express bus lines that'll take you from the Berkeley Oakland area into San Francisco so you really do have a lot of public transportation options in the city uh, your access to the BART stations is pretty good throughout the city except once again if you live on the north side there is a North Berkeley BART, but it is not necessarily easily accessible to all parts of the north side. Berkeley definitely is a very walkable city. You usually don't have to walk too far uh, to get to stores, activities, parks, things like that. In some of the very, very, for lack of a better term, remote residential areas and the hilly areas, extremely hilly areas, it may not be uh, as walkable, but overall the city is a very walkable place to live. Um, and transport wise, you don't get much better than that in California. So let's talk about things to do here in Berkeley. There are a ton of things to do. That is one of the best parts of being in Berkeley. There are a ton of activities that are open to students and the general public both on the University of California campus and in the city so let's talk about a couple of those so on the campus there is the Lawrence Hall of Science which is in the far eastern part in the hills above the campus and that is a great place to take kids spark their interest in astronomy and other physical sciences there's the UC Berkeley Botanical Garden um, concerts are held at the Greek Theater, which is on the east side of campus, and Zellerbach Hall. They all, both of them have pretty major performers come uh, and perform there. Sorry, I'm huffing and puffing, walking up a hill. Haven't walked the hills in Berkeley in a while. So, um, and in the city of Berkeley, there's a lot of stuff that happens in the downtown area. They have um, theaters there uh, for live arts. Uh, you have the Berkeley Rose Garden, which is 
on the north side of the city. Uh, you have the uh, Bay Area Trail. So it is a trail that literally runs along the bay and it is completely flat. Great for walking, running, biking, beautiful views uh, into San Francisco. The thing about Berkeley is pretty much no matter what your artistic or personal interests are, you'll probably find it being represented in Berkeley. So you end up coming here just for entertainment, even if you live in other parts of the Bay Area because so many unique things happen here. So let's wrap this video up with the pros and cons. You know, I usually like to do that. So the pros of being in Berkeley, number one, it's location. It is just a very central place in the East Bay. It's relatively simple to get into San Francisco and definitely to get into Oakland. Um, and you're not too far from a lot of freeway interchanges. So whether you're going, you know, north, south, east, west, Berkeley's pretty convenient for that overall. Second thing is the weather. Being right on the bay, the weather is off, always pretty temperate here. You rarely get extreme heat. You rarely get extreme cold here. Um, it's always pretty temperate in this area. The third thing uh, is definitely the variety of things to do here in Berkeley. As I mentioned earlier, you know, you can be interested in just about anything and find a community here in Berkeley that is also interested in that. A lot of uh, wide variety of events come here. So it is a great place for that kind of stuff. Uh, and then the fourth thing is the school district. People really like the school district here, especially for the wide variety of programs, support and offerings that the district offers. So the cons of Berkeley. Well, I really only see three primary cons to Berkeley. Number one is housing. It is really expensive here in Berkeley. It is very difficult to access. The quality of the housing, you know, can vary. Some depending on what part of the city it is. Uh, but a lot of, especially the detached homes have been remodeled and are uh, pretty modern as possible, keeping their unique style and the unique nature of the architecture of many of the homes. Uh, the second con is freeway access. So there's only one freeway in Berkeley, that is Highway 80. If you watched any of my videos, I am constantly complaining about that highway. It is one of the most challenging ones in the Bay Area and it only runs on the very west side of the city. So, you know, if you're living in many parts of the city, there's no easy freeway access. So you have to devote time and plan for time just to get to a freeway. Another nearby freeway is Highway 24. It lies just outside of Berkeley in Oakland. That also gives you freeway access, especially if you're living on the south side of Berkeley. The third con of being in Berkeley, property crime. It just happens. Uh, you know, they're constantly trying to work on it, trying to improve it. I think you're always going to be challenged with property crime, just given to given the high percentage of students that live here, you know, leaving bikes, backpacks, computers around, things like that. It's just a challenge. Um, most of that, as I mentioned earlier, is concentrated in the campus areas, but it does happen throughout most of the city. Um, so just pay attention. So a city that I mentioned in this video and is directly due south of Berkeley is the city of Oakland. I have a number of videos on the city of Oakland. I'm going to link one of my favorites, top five neighborhoods in Oakland to this video. I'll put it up over here. Over here, you guys know, I never know where the link <laughs> appears. I never figure that out, but I will link that. If you have any questions about anything I talked about in this video or about the Bay Area relocating here in general, please drop me a text, give me a call, send me an email, because when it comes to helping you transition to the San Francisco Bay Area or, you know, the greater California area in general, 
uh, that's what I'm here for. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up so YouTube knows to show it to other people with interests similar to yourself. Hit the subscribe button and hit the bell notification so you know each and every time I drop a new video and I'll catch you in the next video.